This is Noah with Autumnus, and in this video we'll take a quick look at a way to integrate VMware and Microsoft System Center to give us automated and self-service deployment of new VMs. The problem we're considering here is that for a lot of organizations, I've certainly seen, there's a lot of time spent waiting for new virtual servers to get stood up. This can take hours or days or weeks or even longer in some cases. And a lot of times these deployments are error prone and they're certainly tedious for the admins who have to do them. And most often we have scattered record keeping and the process isn't really that clear or well understood by the rest of the organization. And of course, this isn't cutting it anymore in the age of the cloud. Anybody who's used something like Microsoft Azure or Amazon Web Services knows that we should be able to click a few buttons and get a new virtual machine going in a matter of minutes, certainly not days or weeks. So we really want to deliver that internally in our private clouds. And we want to have this be a simplified and consistent experience for the end users or for the IT admins who have to do this sort of thing. And we also want to keep good records uh, that come out of a well-defined process that everybody understands how it works and we can go back and see what was done and how the process is functioning. So without further ado, let's jump into a demo environment and just take a look at the example that I put together that shows how we can accomplish this. So here we are in the admins workstation looking at the standard tool of trade for every VMware administrator out there, which is the vSphere client. Um, we can do everything we need to do in our VMware environment through this tool, of course. Uh, but it's usually the case that when we get into this tool, it's been hours, days, maybe longer that the actual request or the need for this new machine has been outstanding. Maybe we've been busy with other things, the ticket's been in the queue, and finally we're getting around to it. We get the request information, we sort of are able to figure out what's needed based on the request. There's always that process of figuring out what we actually need to build based on the request, which doesn't specify that. It only specifies it in other terms. So maybe we've figured out, for example, that we need to build a VM with this new template right here that I've got. And I go to deploy it. And immediately I have to figure out, well, what is the name for this thing? Um, a name doesn't seem like that difficult of a thing to figure out. Um, people have naming conventions, which are good, but if you ever get to hundreds or thousands of virtual machines, which is easy to do, you start running into cases where the naming convention was mistyped or the servers are already in use in the actual infrastructure or the name is in use in the domain. It was deleted and it's still stuck in there. And just it gets messy, you have to try to figure out what's an available name. So that's just one problem. And that's the first thing we actually have to figure out which is just indicative of this whole approach. Uh, and then once we have a name that we think will work, now we need to figure out, well, where do we put this thing? So I come to this view and I have two choices for cluster. I have no context about which cluster is which and what might be a better choice here. I don't know, I'll choose this one, this seems good. And then the same thing with my host, at least I have a little bit of validation. It tells me if it's successful, but it doesn't tell me which one is you know, in better shape for resources and so on. So there's a lot of things that go on in this tool um, that are tedious and, and not consistent. And then at the end of the day, we go through this whole process and build the machine and we end up with some tasks in our event log in VMware, but we don't really have any records anywhere else of the actual build, how it went, what was chosen and why. Um, and all of that doesn't necessarily make it back into the service requests that that spawn this whole thing. So there's a lot of downsides to this. And of course, we're not gonna give the end users, whoever they may be, maybe they're junior admins, maybe they're in different IT groups, maybe they're just end users, we're not gonna give them access to this tool. That's, you know, that's our tool. We can't give them access to the tool. So uh, it doesn't make sense either, it's too complicated. So what we want instead is a self-service approach. And that is what we're showing here in this example, what I put together. Now, what I'm showing in this uh, browser window here is a self-service portal. And this is actually a System Center Service Manager's self-service portal. It's a SharePoint-based web UI. And what I've created is just a very simple little request form. So I come into automated deployment, and this would be just provided to whoever needed to actually do this. And I have a request here for a new machine. 
And then the request is, instead of going into a complicated tool that requires me to understand all this context, I'm just presented with a simple form. And the form just says, we'll answer these questions, we'll build you a new machine. So, uh, and this is even more complicated than it could be. You could really simplify this because I'm asking for things like what data center. We're assuming some sophistication. But let's say that I do know the data center. And within the data center, I know what cluster. And I'll, oh, look, look at this. The cluster here is actually missing hosts. And it's only very uh, minimally utilized. So that's good. And then I can come down and select the host. I have some information about how uh, much resources are on these different hosts and so on. And I go through this form and I select just the elements that are needed to build this machine. Um, here, obviously I don't want the mediocre network, so I'll select the best network. And uh, I'm gonna pick a template. In this case, my environment, I just have this one template um, defined. And then just a couple simple how many CPUs do you want? I'll do two, and I'll do two gigs of memory. And for the name, I don't need to pick the name. That's one thing I've implemented here. I shouldn't need to know what the name's going to be. Maybe I wanted to start with something. So I wanted to start with test server because I like that prefix. It's very creative. Uh, but I don't know what the number should be on the end of it or whatever to make it unique in the domain and in VMware. I just want it to start with that and you figure out whether it's going to be 56 or 60 or what. And then I just review it and I submit. So this, this is my whole, as a user, this is my whole process. That's all I need to do um, to get a new virtual machine actually being deployed as we speak. Um, what's happened now is that we have a request submitted and this is a service manager service request. In the same way that any ticket system has requests, service manager has uh, service requests that it, it handles just like any other ITIL system. So we have something that starts off as new, it gets triggered into an in-progress state, and then in the background, what's going to happen is that this service request is going to trigger a runbook in, in System Center Orchestrator to get run. And that runbook is going to do all of the automated tasks necessary for the deployment to go through without any human intervention whatsoever. So let's flip over to Orchestrator and actually take a look real quick at what some of those things are. Here I'm looking at the Runbook Designer for Orchestrator, which is just our management tool. And what's going to happen is, and we can see it's already running, is that it's processing my VMware deployment requests right now. Uh, again, no human intervention required. It's just doing this workflow. So the first thing it's going to do is get the service requests that we just submitted. It's going to get all of the selections that we made, data center, cluster, host, and so on. It's going to generate us a host name automatically based on what we provide as a prefix. And then it's going to actually do the deployment. So it's going to create that virtual machine in VMware, do all the things that the admin normally would do, clicking around and, and such. And then at the end of it, it's going to record what happened. So if it's complete and everything went well, we're going to write that back into the service request. So uh, there's no, A, a good record of it, and B, uh, the user could get notified and see what happened. Or on the flip side, if we had some kind of failure, we're going to fall through down to here. We're going to write exactly what the failure was back into the service request. So it's all kept in one place. And the user can actually see transparently what went wrong with my request. And, and so to follow up on that. Now, um, the deployment itself is pretty simple in this example. It's just we're taking in what the user selected for a template. We're going to clone that template into a new VM. We're going to set its network. We're going to configure its memory and CPU and all that good stuff. And then we're going to throw on a customization to add it to the domain and uh, set its time zone and all of that. And at the end of this, we're just going to have a VM that's started up and running and joined to the domain and everything's good to go. So quickly flipping back into vSphere, we can see that the clone is, is now happening and it should finish up pretty quickly and get on with everything else. So the process here is just going to be as quickly as the infrastructure can actually do the deployment which in this case is going to be on the order of several minutes. 
we're going to have our VM done at the end of it and, and ready for us. So there's no delay. The big thing that saves is that there's no delay in the human element of the process. There's nobody having to pick up an item from a queue. There's no, in this case, there's no approval, although you could put an approval in this by virtue of it being a service management system. You could put an approval before this happens. Certainly easy to do. And uh, it just gets delivered right away, so it's completed, and within a few more minutes, it should be ready to go. And while that's finishing up, let's take a look quickly at the Service Manager side of this. Uh, in Service Manager, we have an area for configuration items, which is what the CMDB is, essentially. It's just all of the things in our environment that we keep track of, and this serves as our system of record, a single source of truth, basically, about everything that we have. Uh, what I've included in this example is a runbook that actually does discovery and populates these. So it goes out to VMware and it asks it about all of the things that it has, and then it puts in records into these uh, classes here that say, well, I just asked VMware and it told me there's four clusters. Here's some information about each of the clusters. Uh, VMware told me that we have two data centers currently. Um, we have looks like two data stores, and here's how much is currently free versus total, and so on. So all of this is periodically kept up to date, and that's what we use to feed the request form. Now, the selections then are available to us going forward in a useful form. So we, if we go look at the request that's actually already been completed, we can see the selections made not just as strings, but as actual references to those items. So here's our uh, related items, and you can see all the things that we chose in our requests are right down there. And finally, if we look over in our results and see what happened with this request, it'll tell us, uh, nice, we have successfully implemented, and it was deployed successfully. So. We have that record going forward that this deployment worked. If anything had gone wrong, this field would be populated with a error messages or stack trace or the logs or whatever would be useful to troubleshoot with. So at this point, the user could get an email back or a text message or whatever you wanted to notify them with saying your VM is ready. Uh, here's how to log into it and all that good stuff. And we solved the problem of these long delays for VMs. Uh, we have a consistently built, quickly delivered VM with no human intervention. So I hope that makes some sense. As far as uh, what to do with this, one thing you can do is you can download uh, all of the files that I use to create this, including the management packs for Service Manager, the runbooks and orchestrator, and you can actually just get this working in your own environment to, to play around with it and get ideas from. Um, this is really a basic example of the sort of approach that you can take to going to a self-service deployment uh, method. And this is something you would you start with and you extend it and customize it to obviously to fit your own environment. Maybe you don't want the users to have to choose a host, you want to automatically select a host because um, the, the balancing mechanism is already going to take care of that once it gets on a host, so it doesn't really matter. Or maybe you want to wrap an approval process to this. Or, Maybe you have additional things in the environment that need to be chosen while you're deploying. Like you want a VM not to just be a blank VM, but you want to choose an application that gets installed on it. Maybe it's a SQL server. Maybe it's a Tomcat server, or IIS web server or something. So and you could also use this just as not even um, the particulars of it, but as a template just for a method of uh, essentially what we saw is not using Service Manager and VMware and Orchestrator specifically, but using uh, a service management system that has a CMDB, um, putting data into that somehow, and then providing a web-based UI, a request form, based on that data to a user, having them be able to submit a request, and then that request driving some kind of automated process to happen that takes the request info and does its thing and then returns back what it did. Uh, none of that requires any of the specific applications that we're talking about here. You could do it with entirely different things, but the overall architecture 
or pattern is going to be the same. So I hope that sparks some ideas. If you have any questions or anything uh, you have ideas about, uh, go ahead and drop me a line. Be happy to discuss and hope this helps. Thanks.